Dear student, today we are going to see chapter number two, parallel lines and its transversal. If you have not subscribed my channel, please subscribe it today itself. Let's start. What are parallel lines? The lines in the same plane which do not intersect each other are called parallel lines. Okay, if the lines do not meet each other then those lines are called as parallel lines. Let's say example. Here we have line L and here we have another line M and you can see that line L and line M do not meet each other, do not intersect each other. Even the distance between those two lines is same. Such lines are called as parallel lines. So in this figure line L and line M are parallel lines. Symbolically, we can write this as line L parallel line M. You can see there are two vertical lines. That is a symbol for parallel line. So you can say that line L parallel line M. What is a transversal? If a line intersect given two lines in two distinct points, then that line is called a transversal of those two lines. Let's say example, here we have line L, here we have another line M and you can see that both the line are intersected by a third line X and you can see that line X intersect line L and line M at point A and B respectively. So this line X intersect line L and M at two different points. Therefore, line X is a transversal of line L and line M. Angles made by a transversal. If a line intersect two lines at two different points, then eight angles are formed. Let's see example, here we have line L and line M and they are intersected by a line X. So your line X is a transversal of line L and M and this transversal forms four angles with lines L and M. Let's see here we have angle A that is the first angle, angle B second angle, angle C that is third angle, angle D fourth angle, fifth angle is E, sixth angle is F, seventh angle is G and eighth angle is H. So total here we have eight angles in this figure. So make a note if any transversal intersect two lines at a different point then eight angles are formed. These angles are grouped in different pairs of angles. Let's study the pairs. What are pairs of corresponding angles? Look at the figure. In this figure, line X is transversal of line L and M. There are eight angles in this figure. Make a note, corresponding angles are on the same side of a transversal. You can see the transversal X. To the left hand side of transversal X, there are two pairs of corresponding angles. Let's see your angle A and angle E. They are on the left hand side of transversal X and it is the first pair of corresponding angle in this figure. Now here we have more two angles to the left hand side of transversal X. They are angle D and angle G. And angle D and angle G is the next pair of corresponding angles. So here we saw that there are two pairs of corresponding angles to the left hand side of transversal X. Similarly, we have two more pairs of corresponding angle to the right hand side of transversal X. They are angle B and angle F is the third pair of corresponding angle and angle C and angle H is the next pair of corresponding angles. So total we have four pairs of corresponding angle, two pairs on one side of a transversal X and two pairs on the other side of transversal X. And if line L and M are parallel, then corresponding angles formed in this figure 
will be congruent. So angle A congruent to angle E, angle D congruent angle G, angle B congruent angle F and angle C congruent angle H. So you can see that all four pairs of corresponding angles are congruent. Why? Since line L and line M are parallel. Pairs of interior angles. Here we have a figure. In this figure, line X is transversal of line L and line M. There are two pairs of interior angles in this figure. Interior, you can see the word interior. Interior means inside. So there are four angles inside the parallel line L and M. They are angle D, angle C, angle F and angle E. These four angles will form two pairs of interior angles in this figure. So here we have the first figure, first pair of interior angles, angle D and angle E. You can see that angle D and angle E are inside the parallel lines and they are on the same side of a transversal. So angle D and angle E is first pair of interior angles. Now we have more two angles inside this parallel line C and F and they are also on the same side of a transversal. So angle C and angle F is the next pair of interior angles. If line L parallel line M then angle D plus angle E equals to 180 degree. Angle C plus angle F equals to 180 degree. It means if any transversal intersect two parallel lines at a different points, then the interior angles formed in this figure will be supplementary. Supplementary means sum of those two interior angle would be 180 degree. Pairs of alternate angles. Here we have a figure. In this figure, line X is transversal of line L and M. There are four pairs of alternate angles. They are classified as interior alternate angles and exterior alternate angles. It means there are two pairs of interior alternate angles and two pairs of exterior alternate angles. First, we will see interior alternate angles. You can see that there is one word interior means inside. Okay, so interior alternate angles are pairs of angles which are formed inside the parallel line. Okay, you can see in this figure angle D and angle F are inside the parallel lines and it is one pair of interior alternate angles. So make a note that the angle should be inside the parallel line and they would be the cross angle. You can see angle D and angle F are cross angle. So angle D and angle F is first pair of interior alternate angles. Angle C and angle E is the another pair of interior alternate angles. You can see that those two angles are also inside the parallel lines and they are cross angle. So angle C and angle E is the next pair of interior alternate angles. Now we will see exterior alternate angles. You can see there is a word, word exterior. Exterior means outside the parallel line. And look at in this figure there are four angles outside of these two parallel lines. They are angle A, angle B, angle G and angle H. So in this figure angle A and angle G is one pair of exterior alternate angles. Angle B and angle H is the next pair of exterior alternate angles. So angle A and angle G are outside of those two parallel lines and they are cross angle. Angle B and angle H are outside the parallel line and they are cross angles. So angle A and angle G is one pair of exterior alternate angles. Angle B and angle H is the next pair of exterior alternate angles. And if line L parallel line M then angle D congruent angle F, angle C congruent angle E, angle A congruent angle G and angle B congruent angle H. It means if a transversal intersect two parallel lines, 
then altered angles formed by them are congruent.